Hi everyone, welcome back to your soon to be favorite podcast. I'm Angelica. And I'm Kelsey. And this is Here We Grow. Went to the pumpkin patch this weekend. Oh yeah, with full we intention did. to paint pumpkins, and then we didn't. And then we didn't. But we I got still pumpkins. Painted the pumpkin. They're still in the wagon outside my house. <laughs> um, what else did we do this weekend? Yeah. Nah. Rob, do you have any small talk? <laughs> uh, not entirely. Not. You just got your apartment. I did get that. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yo. Uh, it's going nicely. Actually, just found the couch. Really? So Sunday, I'm going to get the homie Al to help me. Hopefully, I don't have to pay him. Does your apartment have a freight elevator? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I was actually a little worried about that. imagine trying to put yeah. a couch in a regular elevator? Because the couch was, the couch is like, what, six, six, six. And so I called uh, Destiny. I'm like, hey, uh, the freight elevator, what are the dimensions on that? She goes, oh, it's a 10 foot, 10 foot, uh, 10 foot four, something like that. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that's good. Well, so if you haven't noticed, our guest today is Robert. We were like, we're going to have a guest on. You can guess who, but we're not going to tell you. And here you are. (laughs) So let's talk a little bit about how we know Robert. How did you meet Robert? (laughs) He is my sister's boyfriend at the time. (laughs) Okay, so I met Robert in eighth grade mm. or seventh. You you were in eight, you were in seventh, I think. We were in the same grade. Then yeah, seventh grade. In eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we had the same biology class in eighth grade, and it was we at Shortridge. Te- yeah, Shortridge. Do you remember the teacher, Mr. Lester? <laughs> Bruh. What was the weird thing he did every day? Do you remember? I don't, dude. I'm fucking old. Oh my god. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> Tell the listeners. No, I'm just kidding. I'm to... just kidding. Big three, two over here, dude. <laughs> so anyway, um, Mr. Lester, he used to always put on the projector um, memes of cats, mm. and it was like the Ermiger cheeseburger like type, like when those first came out. And it's Aww. funny because like he was like the original meme guy before we even like were into memes. Did he make any of them? No. He just found him on the internet, I think. I want to say he made a few, honestly. Maybe. He he was a weird guy. Very weird, yes. And we always, um, like, people always, like, made fun of his name. His name's Lester. Mm. Sounds like molester. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was kind of a old white guy that could be a molester. So, hopefully he's doing well. Wow. He was kind of old when we had him in eighth grade, which was a long time ago. Kind of. That man was ancient. Yeah. Um, but anyway... Was he a good teacher, though? I passed. I passed, too. <laughs> like, like, that doesn't mean he was a good teacher, though. That means he, that could have just meant that he was just, like, letting us pass. But, I mean, he wasn't mean, so I, I'd say that's a good There teacher. was a few times I had to pay him in order to get No, you grade. did. You did not pay him anything. No, I, I was waiting for you to break. To pass eighth grade biology? <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Look, man, here's that five dollars, man. <sighs> So, an important part of the story is that, of course, he dated Angelica's sister, Maria. And that is the reason that I met Travis. Mm. Have you ever considered that? That you're the reason I met Travis? Mm-hmm. You have? Mm-hmm. Mm, interesting. I didn't know if you, would ha- you, if you would have said that you considered that when I brought it up on the podcast. So, I've been waiting until this moment. How did you meet Travis? Uh, I met Travis at Ripple. Freshman uh, year. Fre- no, not freshman year. Travis oh. only went to Ripple freshman year. Oh, then it was his freshman year. It was my sophomore <laughs> year. Um, or junior year. What? Yeah. Sophomore, sophomore. Jesus. Math ain't mathin'. Jesus. No, he was, a, he was a freshman. I was a sophomore. And Wait, but you two were in the same grade? I think we're missing a part where he got held back. Yeah, no, I got held back. <laughs> oh, I Can was like... that out? I don't care. Okay. Oh, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying not to say he got held back, but it's was, okay, he I got was, held back. <laughs> I was held back in like the third grade. 
something like that. Fuck Wait, no, no, but if, if... But then if me and you were in the same grade in eighth grade, then you would have been in the same grade as Travis freshman year. Oh, wait, no, right. Robert! Sure. <laughs> Look. The math ain't the math ain't ma <laughs> Don't listen to your teachers. You're not going to be using algebraic expressions. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you're better than me. I forgot they were called algebraic expressions. <laughs> A squared but, plus B squared so you, equals C squared. So you met him freshman year because of band, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. We were both in. Yeah, I think he was in band before me. I was in Miss Hershey's uh, piano class, <laughs> and uh, you know, me and D'Angelo was like, we want to go where all the good stuff is. So can we be in a band? And it was a game that night. I remember that. Miss Hershey's the type of teacher to be like, okay, join the band, like one Legit. day. Legit, she just oh, jump so in. She's like, so what do you want to play, Rob? I'm like. The drums. drums. <laughs> Ever since then. Yeah. But yeah. So never done a piano again. Never done a piano. Never ever done a piano again. <laughs> Do you think if you could pick up, like you would, like pick up a drum or a drum set, you could? Almost definitely. Keep a beat. You you were playing on a drum set. Yeah. Oh, okay. But you learn this all at school though. Like you learn how to play at school. Mostly. And rock band. <laughs> and rock band. Yeah. It's a combination of the two. Um, so if there's then, one instrument that I would love to play or love to learn how to is play, the drums. is the drums. Me too. And it's so I much. love the drums. I just feel so like it would it would get so much of my energy out. Like da, 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 just like when you so go to watch work. a marching band, yeah. the energy that comes from the drum line is just like oh, epic. It gives me literally. Ch I'm literally have children. It's like the heart. Right now it's the heartbeat it. of it really the band. Is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anywho, <laughs> whatever. Says the guy that was actually in the band when neither of us actually were. Listen. Band geek. <laughs> mm. I wouldn't say I was a band geek. Yeah, well, I don't think the geeks are on the drum line. I'll say that. I was gonna say the drum line were not the geeks. No, they were the cool kids. They were the varsity of the the band. Yeah. But so anyway, so you meet Travis freshman year at Broader Bolt, but then you guys both go to Tech. We both went to Tech, and then I was like, I don't know anyone here, and I look over and I see him, bro. I'm like, on the bus, right? Yeah. He told me the story the other day. I'm like. And he said that at that time you guys didn't know each other's names. <laughs> it was just bro this, bro you that. You just knew each other by your faces. You didn't know each other's names. Hey, dude. Hey, what's good, bro? <laughs> Type stuff. And then, like, it got to the end of the first day. We uh, went to practice uh, with Mr. Doherty. And he's like, uh, all right, uh, I, want, I want my horns over here. I want my clarinets over here. Uh, drum line, you guys going to be back there? And I look over, and Trey was looking back. And I'm like, and the whole time they're doing their little, you know, stretches and stuff. And we're just like, <laughs> what do we do here? <laughs> What's going on? So, you know, that was the story of, of how I met your husband. <laughs> That's beautiful. How I met your husband. And um, now he's one of my, uh, no, it's a little there. And now he's one of my brothers. So then, cute, cute. so then junior year y'all were still cool and everything you were dating maria because you weren't dating maria when i met you but in during junior year you were meeting her you were mm -hmm. meeting her wait so her. so maybe i did know you before you dated maria then mm -mm. okay i must not because i remember when you, did you meet maria yeah when did you was it not in eighth grade no you did meet maria at short ridge yeah, but i guess they short weren't ridge. dating because joseph and her were dating i know but were you not like friends like would not would no, i not we, have seen you we were, we were friends like I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember what year. Yeah, maybe Today. I didn't. It was like sophomore year, maybe you guys started dating. Like second semester sophomore? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, maybe I didn't meet you before you guys dated then. So then junior year, you started coming after school, riding the city bus from Tech to Broderpool after school, because we would hang out in Broderpool Village after school. There's all the shops and the restaurants and stuff. And we had always had a friend group. We were all hanging out together. So you would ride the city bus to come and hang out with Maria and her friends, being us. And then you eventually start bringing Travis with you. And mm -hmm. that's how I met Travis. Mm -hmm. And if you never brought Travis with you, like what was your intention bringing Travis with you? And he asked if I, what I was doing. I just, I'm just going to go up to Ripple. And he goes, you do that? I'm like, yeah. And he wasn't living that far from Ripple at the time. So mm -hmm. it was like he could walk home if he needed to. Like we both were like, yeah, because you were on Carrollton. 20, yeah, like 20, yeah. 20 minutes of walking, maybe longer, like 30 minutes of walking. Yeah, because at that time, you guys were like three blocks away from each other. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. 
looking back on that now, that was like, that was the year 2011. So it was 12 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, so duh, me and Trevor have been together 12 years. Old. <laughs> Y'all are old. I can't wait for y'all to hit 30. <laughs> What's wrong with Georgia? I just had a flashback of the <laughs> Indiana State Hospital. What? Where you were like, 1994. Yeah. <laughs> 29 years before I was born. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm going to steal that, actually. That's, that's, that's lit. That's, that's, oh, my that's God. Um, yeah, we've known you for a long time. Yeah, we've known Ron for a long time. Um... He's an avid listener of the podcast, so we're like, we gotta have him on, so. Yeah. And you still get some merch. I'm waiting on my hoodie. You already ordered it? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And then, what were we supposed to do, Rob, for the show, for the podcast? Oh, for yeah. The viewers? Why does Angelica look like this? Yeah, why the fuck do I look like this? <laughs> so, listen. <laughs> Admittedly, it was my idea to, to wear a, a costume. <laughs> and... You know, me being old, I'm having memory issues. <laughs> and I forgot what I did with my costume. And on the way here, I'm just like, oh, no, that's at the apartment, isn't it? You so, didn't like, update us or anything? Yeah. Like <laughs> because Angelica did her makeup, like, 30 See, minutes I, before I was on under, I was under the impression that. I would be the only one dressing up. So I'm like, oh, no, I think that that's true. We never told him we were going to I thought like you were going to tell him. No, I didn't. Yeah. Sorry. Well, this is why we have phones, a, people. This is just a lack of communication all around. So yeah, we were all supposed to dress up in our Halloween costume, or you know, just something spooky, mm -hmm. and uh, just me. So, so if, if you're watching, or I guess if you're listening, yeah. you're not watching. Yeah. I have like a spider on one of my eyes, and I have yeah. like hair clips with spider webs and spiders in them, and. Yeah, You'll see it in the thumbnail if you if you're just a listener, not a watcher. Yeah, it's okay. It gave me some good practice, and I like doing my makeup, so yeah, that was a good excuse to get back into it. Yeah, so that was all Rob. Thanks, fault. but no thanks, Rob. I'm just kidding. Oh, wait, okay. what were you gonna dress up as? Me? We were gonna do like I a, skull, do a skull, skull makeup, like how her makeup is, but a skull. Well, when you walked in with yeah, you yours, walked in, so mm, you know, that's I fair. did my makeup while you were sitting there with Jose. We ain't gonna waste time. Yeah, okay, so a few things I have are when I was on or when I was sitting outside waiting for Angelica to get done talking to her neighbors, I was on Facebook. Why'd you say it like that? I, no shade. I just had to say that because that's where I was. I wasn't driving. I wasn't at you home. You waited like two minutes. It was like two minutes, but I was reading an article, which is fine. Oh, okay. I was just reading an article um, in the news that someone in Fishers got arrested for impersonating a police officer. They had a marked vehicle with lights on it. Whoa. They had a mountain laptop in their car. Oh. They had a police uniform, <laughs> radio, everything. Oh my God. Like, could be mistaken for a police officer. And Was this like their Halloween costume or something? Like, no, what? I mean, no. I mean, they, they had the whole, like, the charger and everything. That was charger. They were driving a charger. It, it was marked like a police car. Who was it? His name was Jonathan something. Just what? some white guy. He like pulled over somebody or he something? He pulled or over a, a police officer in an unmarked vehicle. Oh, what a dumbass! And that's how he got caught. And so he goes to start like pull over the police officer. And the <gasps> police officer's like, are you impersonating a police officer? And then the guy starts asking him like, why were you speeding? Where were you on your way to? And like, as if he's still a police officer. Wait, how would they know that he's impersonating a police officer? Like what gave it he, away? I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure just certain stuff, like only little things like that a cop would know. Yeah, that a cop would know. Right. I wonder so what they were. They actually posted a picture of him. He was wearing the green, um, like the neon green police uniform that you would usually see like police officers that are out at events. Like, oh, they have uh -huh. the neon green on and then like the radio over the shoulder. And that's normally not how a traffic officer is yeah. dressed. You idiot. You yeah. can't even do your impersonation right. <laughs> right. But luckily he was doing it wrong because he yeah. got arrested and he's facing a felony offense. that was the first person that he pulled oh, over Oh, no, 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 no. And my, my point of bringing this up is that it's actually very, very common. In Fishers? Should, well, not in Fishers. <laughs> Fishers got bored? <laughs> Y'all so rich. Just wanted... Well, and it wasn't even, he wasn't even impersonating a Fishers police officer who's in, impersonating IMPD. Oh, wow. Nice. And so I just want to say, be careful out there because I actually watched a video not too long ago of a cop pulling over someone because they were impersonating a police officer. 
and got arrested for it. It was bad. He was, he was pulling people over. Yeah. The authority. And then what? Like, what was he, was he like giving them fake tickets or what? I don't know what he was doing, but think of the possibilities. No, no, I know. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah that's horrific. That is horrific and scary. I'm not taking notes. <laughs> don't be pulling over nobody. In your um, Nissan Altima. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with the Nissan Altima, but it's the furthest from a police car. Hey, you know what? Be. I love my Ultima. I'd be the charger any day of the week. Moment of silence so you're gonna, for Robert's ambitions. <laughs> you're going to race a police officer then? I raced Chargers. And <laughs> didn't know it was a race. I <laughs> didn't know it was a race. Or Chargers that could have been a police officer and it pulled you over. Hi, Ruben. Pulled over? <laughs> I don't know. Seriously? I speed when I know there are not any cops. I'll How take, do you know that, though? I'll take the same route. So that way... He hasn't been driving as long as we have either. <laughs> First off. Cuz likes to call out people in this podcast. I've noticed that. And we gotta talk about that. <laughs> She's rude as, rude as we, hell. We gotta talk about that. What's wrong? What's, what's going on? Who hurt nothing. you? You got some beef with Rob. Nobody hurt me. You can't just be over here... Uh... uh I know, like, like the last episode, I was talking about how I w- got out the shower and butt ass naked. I ran to the door. I know this is out of context, but just bear with me. I ran bar- <laughs> butt ass naked. She's like, "Wait, you have a towel on?" I'm like, "I mean, yeah, but like underneath it, I was butt ass naked." I was like, "But for the visual." Yeah, and then when I was talking about my ring, I don't have it anymore. But like when I was talking about my ring, how it like got hit by the door, and I like said something like, "Oh, it's like." Becoming undone, or you're like, hold on, it's only a couple of diamonds missing, or something like that. I didn't say that. No, you said something about the ring, though, about the destruction of it, or something. Oh, that's not what I thought you were gonna call me out about, so we'll just. <laughs> what did you think? Go ahead. The exhaust fan. Oh, yeah, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> The, the little fan in the bathroom, that's an exhaust fan. And she was like, it's not an exhaust fan. I'm like... And she was like, oh, no, I'm an idiot. And, she made and it I looked stupid. it up, and it was an exhaust fan. <laughs> so call her back out. Damn, Kelsey. Savage. My bad. Savage. It's all for the comedy. There you go. It's all for the sake of the comedy. That's okay. I'm imperfect, okay? Which brings me to my next point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to read this little thing that I got from AI. Because I don't, sometimes when you need information and you can't find it on Google, you just ask AI to get it for you and they fucking do. So here goes. A study published in the journal Psycho- in the journal Psychological... Wow. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> no mercy this episode. A study published in the journal Psychological Science found that people are more likely to trust and feel more connected to others who play who display vulnerability and imperfections. The researchers found that individuals who shared their weaknesses or flaws were perceived as more genuine and trustworthy, leading to increased likability and social connection. These studies suggest that imperfections can make individuals more relatable, approachable, and attractive to others. It is literally scientifically proven that being imperfect is more attractive than being perfect. Boom. Hmm. Amen. I like that. Might get that tattoo on somewhere. Uh, that whole excerpt? <laughs> I, I mean, one of them. <laughs> or what I said, it is literally scientifically proven. I like that. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, so do we want to get into two things that are embarrassing that shouldn't be? Yeah, you said just three of them, right? Yeah, I did like seven. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay, would you do like this? Yeah, I'll just go back and forth. I can probably go first. So, <laughs> me and my bougie flip phone. <laughs> it is bougie. He got a flip phone. Um, These are things that are embarrassing, but shouldn't be. Yeah, there's no reason why they shouldn't. Yeah. Forgetting someone's name. Mm. Prime example, me and Travis. I heard. <laughs> I remember hearing his name once. He didn't remember your name either, but and it's just better. like. Bro. He doesn't look like a Travis either. He don't. He, Did you like wait? He looks like a Robert, but he does not look like a Travis. Did you wait for a teacher to call it his name or did you ask him eventually? Like, like how long did bro, it take? Did Ripple? Yeah, bro. Travis. Ah, okay, so that sparked your memory. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, my first. Oh, one. wait, wait. Can I, say, can I say a story about that? Sure. There's this girl I went to college with. Her name was Molly. Shout out. 
<laughs> and I had her for like the first two years of college. College was done and over with, and I'd seen her at some other bar or whatever. And this girl runs up to me and says, Isn't she your dentist? That's another Molly. Oh. <laughs> Like I've heard Molly before. She runs up to me and she's like, oh my god, I missed you so much. How are you? And I'm like, I was so <laughs> tipsy that I literally was like, I'm sorry, who are you again? Like, what's your name again? And yeah. she got so mad at me. Oh. <laughs> she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, sorry, I'm drunk. Please don't hold yeah. it against me. <laughs> Isn't that your dentist? Okay. Shout out other Molly that is my dentist. My first one. I hope you're doing well. I think you've shouted her on the podcast before, which is why I remember it. Okay, my first one is people singing happy birthday to you. Oh my god, that's my first one too! Did you look up articles? I sure did. Yep, we looked at the same article. <laughs> oh no. Well, so now I don't feel bad, because I'll just... Well, I have a bunch of them, so well, maybe I can't, I'll make up for it. I can't think of things... Me either. Like, I have to think of what other people think are embarrassing. But definitely the singing the birthday and the recording. It's like when they're... Yes, and when they're singing happy birthday to you, it's like what I did with my hands. <laughs> well, I started to like sing along yeah, or like... like bounce around. Yeah. yeah I don't like it. it. I don't like it. Oh, I've seen you do that. That's... Yeah. Okay, I have, uh, uh, aside from that, <laughs> parking next to someone in their car. Oh, yes. Or, or if you're going to stay in the car. Well, just in general. Oh, okay. Or also, like, if both of you pull up at the same time, I wait for that person to go, like, yeah. get out and go into the store. Okay. And then I go. Yeah, that's not as bad. Like, if I'm going to be sitting in the car and they're sitting in their car, too, it's just, like, awkward. Like, let's not look at each other. Let's just not look at each other. <laughs> no, I couldn't do it. That's, that's so weird. It is really weird. When you just look over and they look over at the same time, it's just... Like, <laughs> hi, then. Or you look over and you just act like you didn't see them look at you. <laughs> Hi, Darren. All right, so my next one is hiding the fact that you're out of breath after a flight of stairs. Listen, people. I'm a chunky guy. I get... And I, 32. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> wow. Honestly, this is going to sound like the worst episode of me calling people out, but it's Tell her. Like, Tell her she's not far behind you. To Rob. I always you're not that far I'm behind I'm three it. years behind you. Three? Three short years. As soon as you hit 30, that knee is on. And then how old will you be? So listen. Oh my God. I get tired even looking at stairs. <laughs> you were going to say me. That's okay I get, too. I, I get tired hard. even looking at this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got dragged on this show. I got verbally threatened. If you don't come on this show, we will literally find you a stump. That's you not how he's ended up on the show. Let me tell it how I told Jose, okay? Oh, God. I said, hey, you should come be on our podcast. You're like, no, I don't think so. I was like, no, you really should. And you're like, okay. And then you were like, let's do it in a month. And I was like, how about next week? And you're like, okay. She made some very convincing points. I did. It was a little bit more detailed than that. But anyway. What's your next Where were we at? It was money. Farting or burping in public? Um, I feel like farting should be embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm burping not so much, but farting. Farting, yeah. you should be embarrassed. <laughs> you don't think so? Better up than in. I always say. I mean, so anything that's embarrassing is based off of whether or not societally it's okay to do in public. So yeah, I could see how you'd say that, but I mean, yeah, I guess like farting. I'm embarrassed if someone else farted in public. I'd be like, damn, that's embarrassing. I would laugh. I feel like. And, it and doesn't do I be embarrassed for them because I laughed at them? I swear to God, I'm laughing every time. But if they don't <laughs> laugh, I'll... <laughs> like, if you just walk in here and like, like, secondhand embarrassment? Oh, that's strong with me. Mm. I get back to me. That's why I can't watch The Office. Yeah, yeah It makes me so watch awkward. Give yeah. it a chance. I yeah. can't. It's just dry, satirical humor. <sighs> Alright. I'll have to give it another shot, but... <clears throat> I don't know. My next one is... Getting caught taking a selfie or recording a video of yourself. <laughs> That's another one in the car. Like, if you're taking a selfie in the car or recording a video and, like, there's somebody walking by, you're like... Or at the gym. Can't even take progress pictures about yeah. someone walking in. It's like, ah. Yeah. Oof. I yeah. saw... I uh, went to the program last night and I saw this lady in her car just... Getting <laughs> oh, it. And I'm just like... my gosh. Bro, it's 10 o'clock at night. Did you stare at her and make her uncomfortable? <laughs> 
I wanted to, but then it's like, oh no, she she's of the fairer shade, and I'm I'm not. I'll get arrested for that. And you're downtown. <laughs> oh, so yeah, um, not anywhere near the croquetto. Oh, yeah, croquetto. That's that one. Next. Oh wait, is it back to me again? No. Wait, no, just yeah, went. <laughs> I thought he went because he was talking. Oh. <laughs> oh, you know what? I feel bad sometimes, like store owners, where like you walk and you're like, no, this is this isn't yeah. what I need, and I'm like, oh, let me get my business. I'm mm. so sorry, but your products suck. Yeah, I mean, it's really your if, fault. If it's local, then maybe, but like, true. Walmart. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, like yeah. a candy bar with a cashier. <laughs> <laughs> Sympathy buy. Yeah. A bag of chips and a pop. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so my next one is. Pretending to need something else at the grocery store until the person moves out of the way from what you actually need. Yeah. I do that all the fucking time. Yep. You start, like, you start reading aisle, labels. Like, <laughs> looking at my phone like... Mm-hmm. And if they take forever, I'm like, if, there's no way you have to make this long of a decision. Like, there was this one time this guy was looking at the shredded cheese. I'm like, are you reading the ingredients? <laughs> it's cheese. <laughs> I can see if you're, like, picking out a pie, but cheese... <laughs> Come on, you know what cheese you need. Get the cheese. I um, if it was new cheese. Yeah. Okay, let's take a break. Because I haven't even set a timer. I'm glad I've been watching this. Um, let's take a break and we'll be right back. <sighs> Getting out of the pool. Well, one. it is embarrassing, though. Because, like, the water, it makes you so heavy. Mm-hmm. Hate that feeling. And then you're like your swimsuit's like drowning in the water that's coming yeah. off of you. And you're just dripping. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Super I hate embarrassing. That. Okay. It's embarrassed. And then the last Seems one is letting someone know you're already in the bathroom when they knock. No, no, that that's not embarrassing at all. Someone knocks on. What do you guys say? Um. Do you so, say occupied, busy? I'm here. I'm like, Someone's in here. I'm like occupado. <laughs> I'm like, sometimes I say occupado. Just like make it funny. I say busy. I think one time I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hello. You answered the phone. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Angelica has a, a game for us where she's going to say or sing lyrics. <laughs> and then me and Rob have to figure out what the song is. Should we like yell out what the answer is and whoever gets it first? Or should we write it down on the whiteboard? Correction. Kelsey's going to figure it out because I'm horrible at this photo. So maybe we should just call them out. Yeah, just call them out. Okay. I tried to I tried to get a good variety of songs. Now I try not to be like I don't really know what kind of music Rob listens to. A little bit of everything you else. Know, and, and, and I, and Mine I, is bluegrass or folk music. No what the fuck it isn't. Shut up. No, seriously. I tried to pick popular songs that we all would know. Mm-hmm. So Okay, I'm Ready? just gonna I'm just gonna say it. I'm not yeah. no particular like emphasis on any words, okay? Okay. Why are you nervous? Because it's like playing on my song or my song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Come inside, pick up your bags off the sidewalk. Don't you hear sincerity in my voice when I talk? Told you this is my fault. Look me in the eyeball. I don't know it, you're gonna have to sing it. I don't know. No, that was, that no. was tough. You're going to have to sing that. Come inside, pick up your bags off the sidewalk. Don't you hear sincerity in my voice when I talk? <gasps> so and is Rihanna. Yup. Um, and Rob can get it. Told love, you love this the is my fault. Yup. Oh, Look okay. me in the eyeball. Just one of them. It's harder when you say it. I know. The temper. I know. The temper. The tempo. Yeah. Okay. Or the melody. Okay. We drove to Cali and got drunk on the beach, got a motel, and built a fort out of sheets. I finally found you, my missing puzzle piece. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was writing these down. I was like, what the fuck? It sounds so stupid when you say <laughs> it. Okay, sing no? it. <clears throat> <laughs> we drove to Cali and got drunk on. Wait, hang on. We drove to Cali and got drunk on the <laughs> Katy Perry. I love Katy Perry. We drove to Cali and got drunk on the beach. Got a motel in built a fort out of California sheets. girl. I finally found no. my missing puzzle piece. I'm complete. Mm-hmm. Yep, sing it wrong. Mm-hmm. No Why can't I remember the song? Just love. 
We can dance until we die. I know the song, but I can't think of the you title. You and I will be young forever. <laughs> da, 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 da. Or you. Teenage Dream. Yep. Ah. <laughs> Those are going to sound so horrible. <laughs> I, I knew it was I can sing better than that, I promise. We, they know, you can sing. Okay. I'm the one that can't sing, so when she's like, sing it wrong, I'm like... Mm. <laughs> well, okay, so last time you got the artist and Rob got the name of the song, and then you got the artist. Yeah. Song, and, okay. Yeah. Next. <clears throat> How many do you have? Nine. Okay, Jeez. that's good. That was good. Okay. Ripped jeans, skin was showing. Hot night, wind was blowing. Where you think you're going, baby? Uh, oh Rebecca. No, not Re Is it Rebecca Black? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's the other girl. Yeah, no, um. But you're, you're on her. Oh, damn it. Ripped jeans, skin was showing. Hot night, wind was blowing. Why Where do I you know think this? you're Sing going, it. baby? Sing it. Hang on, hey, bro. I'll just make it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's just, it called, though? Mm. It's crazy. Call me, baby. Yep, bye. Mm. Her name starts with a C. It, her name is three names. Carly Ray Jepsen. Yup. Yes. We did it. We flipped it again. Jesus. <laughs> you know, just elbow me in the face. <laughs> I didn't elbow you. Okay. <laughs> I believe in you like a virgin. You're Madonna, and I'm always gonna want to blow your mind. Oh my gosh, I've heard this. <laughs> what is it? I yeah. believe in you like a virgin. You're Madonna, and I'm always gonna want to blow your mind. You have to sing it. Hang on, Rob. Can I buy a vowel? <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you like a virgin, you're Madonna, and I'm always gonna wanna blow your mind. Da 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 I don't know pop this well. I, I've heard the song, but I couldn't tell you what it is. I want to say that's. Is it Nick Jonas? No. <laughs> then it's um. <clears throat> oh my God. I believe in you like a virgin from Madonna, and I'm always gonna wanna blow your mind. Was that one of the boy groups? Hey, soul sister. Bye. I don't know who it is. It's something that goes on tracks. Train? Yep. That's the name? That's the name of the band. I've never heard of that band before. Mm -hmm. I think it's just that one song that everyone knows. Oh, yeah. the, the old one and done boy. One and one done. Or... Okay, so Kelsey has one more point thing you Rob. Are you really keeping track? <laughs> not really. No. I was about to say this. I'm like, I'm not keeping track. Is there a point or something? No. No. Girl, I keep it gangster. Popping bottles at the crib. Crib. This is how we live. <laughs> Every single night, take that bottle to the head and let me see you fly. This sounds like Kesha. <laughs> like, without it, knowing the song. It's a similar artist to Kesha, one of them, okay. at least. Iggy e Azalea. No. No. Sing it. Robbie Gibbons, who's singing it? Um. Girl, I keep it gangster, popping bottles at the crib. This is how we live every single night. Take that bottle to the head and let me see you fly. I forget how the first part goes. Mm -hmm. Take that bottle to the head and let me see you fly. Popping bottles. <gasps> G6. G yup. Um, like a G6. Like a G6. I don't know the name of the artist. I don't think no one does. It's like a weird name. Yeah. Far East Movement, Far East the Movement. Cataracts, and Dove. Um, Travis loves that song. That, that. Popping bottles. I don't know the lyrics, but Poppin girl, I like keep gangster. Popping bottles at the crib. This is how. Yeah, anyways, yeah. you get it. He also loves Toxic. Yeah. Uh, Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. Travis. Mm -hmm. I love that song. <laughs> I, I feel like there. I I heard recently like other men like that song. It's a good song. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Half black, half white, Domino. Gain the money, Oprah Doe. Yo, I'm running through these hoes like Drano. What? I got that devilish flow, rock and roll, no halo. What the? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, damn it. 
It's a rap, so you can't really sing it, can you? Oh. Half black, half white, domino. Gain the money, overdose. Yo, L-M-F-A-O. I'm running through these hoes um, like I know I got rock. that devilish flow. Rock and roll, no halo. Mm-hmm. I party rock. rock. You got it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. And then I started getting deeper, so mm-hmm. bear with me. Okay. <laughs> the moments died, I hear no screaming. The visions left inside me are slowly fading. Would she hear me if I called her name? That last line sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. That's Breaking Benjamin? Mm-hmm. Another band. Sing it. Bullet? Hang on. Uh, for my Valentine. Yep. What's the song? Let me get the lyrics. The mo- okay. The moments died, I hear no screaming. The visions left inside me are slowly dying. Would she hear me if I called her name? First person to fire? Nope. Would you like me to sing it? Yes, sing it. Rob? Go for it. The moments died, I hear no screaming. The visions left inside me are slowly fading. Yeah. Would you hear me? If I called her name, would she heal me? Yep. If she knew my, my shame. Oh, shame. There's always something fucking going wrong. The path I walked in the wrong direction. Your. Your reach around? They crash around me. It's called your reach Your tears no. don't fall. Yep. Oh, tears don't fall, yeah. Hey, tell me, I got the song lyrics. <laughs> Okay, two more. <clears throat> when I wake up, I'm willing to take my chances on the hope I'd forget. That you hate him more than you notice. I wrote this for you. That sounds familiar too, but without <laughs> singing it. That's, that's what's going on, y'all. Yeah. When I wake up, I'm willing to take my chances on the hope I'd forget. I hate him more than you notice. I wrote this for you, for you. So, was that Fallen Boy? Yep. Nope. Is it? Yep. Honestly, surprised I'm doing as well as I'm doing. But it's more than I could say for him. Dun, dun, dun. Where is your boy tonight? Mm-hmm. I hope he is a gentleman. Or maybe he won't find out what I know. You were the last good thing about this part of town. Okay, last one. <clears throat> you should have known the price of evil. It hurts to know that you belong here. Yeah, no one to call, everyone to fear. Sing it. Uh, uh damn. <laughs> what was that evidence? I forgot the worst song goes. Everyone to fear. You should have known the price of evil. It hurts to know that you belong here. Um, That's a big sevenfold. It is. Um, um, no um, one uh, to call. Oh, he's not a He's a heaven. Everyone so far away. Damn it, what is it? Mm-hmm. It's your... Fucking nightmare! Damn it! <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> we knew all the rock ones. <laughs> Naturally. Very good. Well, next time, all rock songs. <laughs> all rock. I agree. Okay. All right. Well, that was good. Fantastic. All right. Y'all ready for some spooky stories? <sighs> We're giving you part two of last week. Hope spooky you enjoyed it. Time. We're doing it again. Oh God. Okay, I'm going to try the whole game thing. We'll see how it works. But I'm going to try reading the title to Angelica and Rob of the story. And you guys have to try to guess what is the scary thing that happens in the story. Mm-hmm. If you want to do it on the whiteboard so you guys don't write down the same answer. Mm-hmm. You don't do the same answer. And then whoever gets closest gets a point, basically. <laughs> Purple and pink. We're feels so important. You know, I was going over, or I was listening to last week's episode, mm-hmm. and there was a... Rob, for those of you who haven't listened, Rob, um, there's a doppelganger. In his defense, it just came out today. <laughs> uh, he's had a good 12 hours. True. <laughs> well, 
No, well, it, was, no that's, that's... <laughs> it was a doppelganger incident, mm -hmm. but there was a dog involved. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what if the dog was astro projecting to protect? Because it was sleeping. Yeah. Mm. I think astral projection. I mean, it'd be a long stretch. Yeah. Who the fuck I mean, knows anymore? the whole fucking story is a long stretch. I know, but seriously, though, like, why was it acting scared? Yeah, I don't and know. And it went up to him, and it was, and, and only then did he or she recognize, I don't know if it was a guy or girl, did he or she recognize that, okay, this may not be a good situation. I need to go inside the house. Yeah. Anyway. That's true. That's true. Okay. I'm so lost, but all right. <laughs> because <laughs> it'll yeah. make sense once you listen to the yeah. episode. Okay. Starting off strong. So the title of this, and I have to bl I have to blank one of the words so that you don't get it. Blank an abandoned town. Ah, oh, I know this. Ooh, that, <laughs> wow. Um. So what's the scary thing that happens? It could be, is it a creature? Is it a ghost? Is it a serial killer? Is it a doppelganger? A mimic? You know what? What do you think it is that's scary? Give me that first line again. Blank in an abandoned town. Let me set a timer because once I get reading, I won't be able to remember to watch the time. What you got, Rob? Got murder. Murder. So a serial killer. Yeah. Okay. We well, didn't even hear mine. Yeah. Well, I didn't say it was right. Oh, I thought you were confirming. I'm like, <laughs> no. I'm what is sorry? yours? Ghosts. Ghosts. Okay. You want me to tell you now or just read the story? No, I'll just read the story. Okay. Hey, I won't, oh, hold on. Hi. <laughs> hey. Uh, Rob is just like, there's a the part where they like introduce it. themselves to everybody on Reddit, so I'm going to skip that part. Um, okay. So I'm basically in the foothills or in the mountains, lots of back roads, lots of trees. I know typical of scary stories. The middle of nowhere with spooky trees. But once again, I don't think much of it. I've lived around forests all my life. I see them as peaceful rather than scary. So I finish up this particular clinic at this particular clinic at 6 p.m. And as you know, we don't. <laughs> if you live up north, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> if you live up north in the winter, it's dark by then. But once again, I'm thinking nothing of it. But even so, I'm tired and hungry and ready to go to bed. My team calls it a day, and I set up to take my hour and 45-minute drive home. Whew, whew, that's quite the commute. Mm -hmm. The first 30 minutes, I'm in town, then on a highway, so pretty nice, smooth sailing. Listening to lo-fi music. Lo-fi. Lo-fi music. <laughs> lo-fi. <laughs> the fuck is lo-fi? You see what I got to do with? <laughs> do you know what lo-fi is? Lo-fi is like soft hip-hop. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Per Why do I know that? <laughs> listening to lo fi music as per usual, using it as my decompress and meditative time. I keep driving, then I notice a huge crash up ahead, like a four or five car pileup. Really nasty on this busy highway. So I take an exit off the highway, going to drive around it so I can get home and into my bed quicker rather than sit and wait for them to clear a path from one of the lanes. Anyway, I start driving through this town that honestly looks like maybe three freaking people live in it. All the buildings are run down. The road is so messed up, it's awful. My car, my car's poor tires and hydraulic system were begging for Ooh. me to stop. So I had to slow down a lot as to not stress my car. It's dark and really old, but again, places like this exist, a town on its last breath. I've seen them more than a few times from living up and down the East Coast in less than shitty neighborhoods. I'm not going to judge, but I will note this place is just really, really empty. No cars, no lights. Boarded up houses, just <gasps> empty. Hell no. I'm driving between 15 and 20 miles an hour. My brights are on so I can see. It's a light, it's a clear night, so I have that going for me. As I'm driving past this big fire department overrun with bare trees, a loud thunk comes from the roof of my car. <laughs> my, I don't know why I thought gargoyles. <laughs> Of all the things. Great. I quickly pull over into the parking lot of the abandoned fire department. Wonderful. I'm thinking, get sideswiped by a random dude at a rest stop and dent the top top of my poor orange berry in one week. Orange berry? <laughs> Must be the fellow of his car. I open the door in a panic, expecting to see some tree branch denting my roof. But nope, nothing. Which is weird enough as it is. I'm like, what the hell? I knew something hit my roof, 
So I go to check behind my car. Maybe it rolled off. Maybe it was a bird or a bat that fell then flew away. Or a bat. <laughs> or a bat. <laughs> there are a lot of trees around here. I walk all around my car, look into the messed up road, nothing. I chalk it up to the winged animal idea and climb back into my car, a little rattled. So it's silent as I get situated. That's when I hear this ear piercing shriek. <laughs> I'm talking, someone is screaming so loud, it sounds like their vocal cords could break. Oh my God. I lock my door and start getting back on the road. Calm down, I'm thinking. Bobcats are everywhere. Remember the bobcats from last mm -hmm. week? You've heard that sound. You've heard what they sound like plenty. Like a woman crying bloody murder. It's just a bobcat. It's just a bobcat. It's just a bobcat. <laughs> my hands are shaking and I'm trying to drive out there as fast as I can. Oh, out of there as fast shit. as I can. And the road is bumpy. Right. Just a bobcat. Some kids playing a prank. Some homeless tweaker. My car was rattling back and forth as I got... <sighs> Up to a comfortable 35 miles an hour, of course. That's me pushing it for my abused car. I'd make it up to him later with a nice wash. I drive another mile through this town and a few miles from the exit to the highway again. I'm mentally kicking myself for being so scared. Like a little pansy, I'm freaking out over some animals. Ha. I'm a mile now. I'm a mile away now, thanks to the helpful yet very beat up and weathered signs. I'm calming down. Nothing crazy. Maybe it would be a good idea to play my lo-fi again as I pause that 24-7 live stream one from YouTube when I got out of my car. Just as I reach for my phone in the passenger seat, something rushes past my headlights. I scream and break hard. I don't know why it was yards away from me in the very distant part of my headlights. All right, that's the final straw. I'm crying at this point, shaking so hard I can barely grip the wheel, eyes blurry with tears. I don't care about the music anymore, and even though I'm still reminding myself animals inhabit tree-dense, abandoned towns all the time, this situation was still enough to get me crying. I keep driving, trying to focus on getting to that damn highway. But that's when I see it. If it's a human, then it's not like any human I've ever seen. <sighs> on the side of the road, seeming to stand, stand so politely on the sidewalk as if waiting for me to pass, so it could cross the street was this tall thing. What? It had, it had sunken facial features and looked naked. Loose skin, all of it, oh. sagging down to its legs and arms, what? piling at the wrists, ankles, and knees, around its neck, and hanging from its jaw. I saw it for half a second before I slammed my foot on the gas. Sorry, Orangeberry, like I said, I'd make it up to you. Sounds like a Wendigo. I'm screaming obscenities now. Fuck this. Fuck that. What the fuck was what the fuck? You get the idea. My onslaught of emotions being too much. Goosebumps covered me from head to toe. Tears rolling down my face. Hands gripping my steering wheel so tight there's nail marks in it. I swerve onto the highway recklessly into the other lane. I drive at 80 for a little bit before I eventually oh slowing down God. and pulling over to the side of the road to sob and call my dad. He picks up instantly and when he hears me crying, he's all concerned, trying to get my story. I explain everything. I call it a man in some scary monster costume. Wow. <laughs> and my dad instructed me to call the police, which I didn't really want to do. I was already a nervous wreck having to explain it or even go back with someone. Absolutely F that. My dad, but my dad insisted, so I called the cops. I tell them I saw a man in the town back there off the exit in a costume. He scared me really bad. And after a few more questions, the cops said they'd check it out and sent me on my way. No, I can't be I can't be sure it wasn't a costume. No, I can't be sure it wasn't some weird outfit and bad lighting at night. No, I'm not saying all of these events were connected in some way, but what I am saying is it all happened so quick it was hard to dismiss as of nothing. And if this was a costume, it had to be a good a damn good costume because it was hyper realistic and saw every single fold and wrinkle and could even make out a couple blue veins. <laughs> I don't even remember the name of the town. I haven't gotten a call back from the police about any updates. If there was anyone found with a costume on stalking the side of the road in a beat up town at 7 p.m. It happened about a month ago. I'm better now. As long as I'm in my car, I'm safe. But I no longer feel safe being outside of my car at night. Not even a short walk from my front door to the driveway is safe anymore. I'll start shaking and panting if I'm outside in the dark alone for more than five seconds. I don't know who to tell or what to believe, but at the very least, I hope you guys found it entertaining. Thank you for your time. My <clears> thing <throat> is, it was not a costume. This this town was, like, abandoned. It was not a guy. 
So we were both wrong? Yes. It was cryptid and an abandoned sound. A cryptid. See. <clears throat> <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I don't know if this is like. Uh, what's that one? It's called like. From the creator of Haunting of Hill House. They like made another one called like mass or come to church or something anyways basically i'm thinking i'm having all these like theories in my head right <laughs> like there's someone there's people in that town still mm -hmm. deprived of sunlight because mm -hmm. now it hurts their skin or whatever deficient of every literal nutrient in their body and vitamin mm -hmm. and they just live there and whatever yeah. the land yeah has sounds like a good big, uh, big case spot a good vacay spot, good vacay spot. for Halloween, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, like, there's this movie that I watched a long, long time ago as a kid where it was, like, rural somewhere, and some people were, like, rowing down a river, and, like, their boat, I don't know, got caught in something, and they ended up in this person's farm, and they, like, butchered people, and they were cannibals, and, like, mm. they looked different than us. Like, mm -hmm. they're... Kind of human, kind of not. Yeah. I mean, there's got, I don't even know, but. Mm, that's freaky. That's what I think. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the general theory about cryptids is. Or like, how are they related to skinwalkers? I don't even know what a cryptic is. Cryptid? Crypt cryptid. That to me sounded like a Wendigo. An animal such as Sasquatch or the Loch Ness Monster that has been claimed to exist, but never proven to exist. Bigfoot. What's a Wendigo? That sounds familiar. When. Go? When, did he go? when did he go? When did he go? Um, it just says the cult. Oh, cannibal. Yeah, like someone who's just not a like primal, someone who's Man not civilized. Yeah, 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 like, oh my god. Now, like, ooh, someone's driving into town. Let's yeah, let's scare the shit out of them. Maybe, maybe fuck out of them. Maybe we can eat them. But what fell on the roof of the car? Them. The cryptid. <gasps> oh, I bet. Oh, like landed on the car and then jumped off. <gasps> but how? It, how was it ahead of it? I guess when they pulled over to check, they could have gone ahead yeah. of it. Well, I don't know. We don't know how they. Well, then why did they get? Why did they attack them when they pulled out of the car? I don't know. Car? I don't know. The person's only allowed to tell the story. I mean, I guess I'm asking the wrong person. <laughs> You're like, well, why, why are they alive, Kelsey? Would you pull over? No. Oh, no, I would not pull over. Absolutely not. It is what it is at this point. If it sounded like a mechanical issue, sure. Yeah. Oh, but maybe even. still not even in that town. Yeah, not even. No. Especially if I didn't know if my car was going to make it through oh, on the roads no. that were so badly beaten up. I'll yeah. just Homegirl said a comfortable 35. A comfortable 35. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, let's take a break and we'll do some more stories. Uh, apparently, I don't know. Blank how voices. Mm -hmm. Remember the things I named off earlier? Can we name them off again? Okay. <laughs> okay. Angelica? Changing voices. Okay. Screaming voices. Nope, neither one. Damn it. <laughs> Let me just tell you. Go for yeah. it. Mimicking voices. Ah, oh. I was gonna say mimic too. Oh, no. That's why I said remember the uh, same. Changing voice. Oh no, that's same. Yeah. Dang. All right, mom, give us a story. So I'll start off. I'll start off saying I'm Native American, so a lot of weird and creepy crap happens. But I'm going to start with the first one I remember. Yes, Rob. Would you like to tell the class? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was summer. I was about six or seven years old. Ooh, that's young for a scary, a scary story. And I was running around with no shoes on in my grandma's yard. As I was playing in the yard, I hear my grandma call my name from the woods. Comet. I guess it was the name. I stood there confused. I didn't see my grandma go into the woods, but she called again. Comet! Oh, hell no. I called back to her. Also, Gran how cool of a name. Right. I called back to her. Granny, where are you? She responds with my name again, and I respond back. Hold on, let me put on my shoes. I run inside to get my shoes on. As the door opens and I sit to put them on, my grandma walks out of the kitchen and tells me lunch is almost ready. I stare at her and she notices and asks me what's wrong. I asked her if she was just in the woods. She shakes her head and I tell her that she just called me from the woods. My grandma walks to the door as I say that, closes it and locks it. She says to me, by far the creepiest thing for a kid to hear, if someone calls your name from the woods, never go to it. 
Ooh. I said, okay. And she says, don't go back outside. I don't know what I heard that day, but since that day, I have, I have heard my mom's voice, dad's brothers, sisters, grandpa's aunts, uncles, friends, even my freaking unborn cousin at the time. I don't know what does that, but I am scared and will never go into the woods looking for it. That's best. <laughs> That's awesome as I'll get up. I also want to hear the, I want to read the first comment. I don't mean to scare you, but what you may have heard is a skinwalker. They mimic the voices of loved ones. And once you hear a skinwalker, it means they have already heard you. <gasps> so get away and stay away. Don't ever go near, even oh if you think God. it's someone who needs help. If something feels off, then something is off and get away fast and stay away. Please stay safe. Yeah, but an unborn cousin? That is weird. That is really weird. Like, how did you remember what their voice sounded like by okay. the time you met them? Here's a comment. A comment. <laughs> That's the name of the person. Comment says, I, commenter, <laughs> says, how did you know the voice was your unborn cousin? Comment replies, because two years before she was born, I heard a voice and I didn't recognize it. It was always... I always recognize it to this point, so I was confused. Well, seven or eight years later, she was across the yard and yelled, Comet! Oh, and it like... I stopped and realized that I heard those many that name, that voice many, many years ago. Jesus. I didn't know what to say, but I couldn't sleep that night because I didn't know how that was even possible. Oh, my God. A skinwalker from the future. Yes. Oh, well, God. a skinwalker, what, what, kills you? Like, what... I don't know. Oh, Google. I mean, I've heard of like Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. With aliens, but like. Is that real? Like, that's a real place? Well, and, and they can like form into animals, I thought, but not people. Skinwalkers are shape-shifting magical beings that belong to the Navajo spirit world. Okay. Well, there you go. They have the ability to steal the face of a person and some believe <gasps> that. If one ever locks eyes with a skinwalker, mm -hmm. hold on, I had to click on the link to get the rest of it. But they'll see your face. Something. Oh, well, I can't find the part that I was Why do I feel like I've watched the show like this? Probably Supernatural. Yeah. I would watch Supernatural. And they That's definitely freaky. had skinwalkers on there. Or they like trap you and live your life and like cause mayhem. Jokes on you, mother... <clears throat> I told Kelsey, if that were to ever happen to me, like, if I ever, like, came across my doppelganger, I'd be like, girl, you, you can have it. <laughs> Take me out. <laughs> you want to trade. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This one's going to be hard to guess, but we'll just do it anyway. I'm going to read a sentence from the beginning of the story. And it says, We head out early, and since we have some time left, we decided to head to a park next to her house and just hang out for a bit before I drop her off. We park my truck. That literally gives us nothing. What do you think happens while they're at the park? I know, that's why I said it's going to be hard to guess. You don't have to guess if you don't want to. No. What happens at the park? I can give another hint. Another hint. Um, Pedophile? Like, what are we looking at? It has at? to do with electricity. <laughs> She's like even more confused now. Right. Okay. Electrician. <laughs> and the electrician comes over and murders them. <laughs> I really have no idea. And I don't know how we knew it was an electrician. <laughs> uh, I wrote down uh, like a power line. Okay. Phil. Oh. Both wrong. Oh, wow. So the name of this one has messed <laughs> me up for years. Anyone had something similar? Years ago, maybe 2006, 2007 ish, I took my girlfriend, now wife, to the movies where we just hung out, where we, we were just out of high school. We decided to see the exorcism of Emily Rose against her mother's advice. We made it through half of the movie. She wasn't enjoying it at all, and neither was I. We head out early, and since we have some time left, we decided to head to a park next to her house and just hang out bit for a bit before I drop her off. We park my truck. I take the keys out of the ignition and set them on my lap. A few seconds after this, the radio comes on, and the LCD display is just showing weird symbols and there's a very deep voice coming from the speakers. 
It was really loud and clear, but the words it was saying were not English, and neither of us understood what it was saying. We proceeded to jump out of the truck, kind of freaking out. After the scary movie, we were uneasy, and this was just over the top. Hell no. When we hopped out, the radio shut off, and the voice stopped. After a few minutes, we decided we should head back to her house now. She lived less than a block, so we sped over there. Once there, I had the strangest feeling like someone was right behind me or watching me. I was real scared at this point. It was just odd. It was just so odd. I called my mom. I told her that I couldn't explain ha- I couldn't explain now, but I wouldn't be home tonight, and I would tell her more in the morning. No way I was driving that truck home alone in the dark. We sat for a while with her family, and I asked her mom if I could stay the night there, and her dad said I could share a room with her brother. Fast forward to when we were going to sleep, her brother gave me the bed and I slept and slept on the floor facing away from me towards the door. After a bit, sitting there propped on my elbow facing the door, all of a sudden it got very cold and I couldn't move or talk. Into the doorway walked a silhouetted figure that was a that was black like smoke with solid white eyes and appeared to have dreadlocks and a high ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> it stood in the doorway for what seemed like forever, staring straight into my eyes, and then turned and walked into the bathroom. As soon as it leaves the door, I can move again, so I have to know if it's in the bathroom at this point. I nervously get up and get out of bed. I would not be getting out of bed to go follow this thing. Well, that's, you put the blanket over your head. Her, bro- her brother startles me by asking, what are you doing? And I say, I have to go to the bathroom. Nothing was there. Since in that movie, the weird stuff always happens at 3.30 a.m. for the next four years or so, almost every night I woke up at 3.30 a.m. with the same someone watching me feeling. I chalked it up to sleep paralysis and a weird tech glitch and the rest on me being paranoid and anxious about it. I've told all my friends over the years and about two years ago decided to tell my brother-in-law. He was dumbfounded when I told him and said that he remembers that night very clearly because he was frozen and saw the same thing. So what the heck? Anyone have anything similar? <laughs> wow. I wasn't expecting the, bro- the brother-in-law to say he saw the same thing that night. Especially because when he got up, he was like, what are you doing? Like, as if he was being weird. Why would he be like, what's going on? <laughs> like, do you see that too? Yeah, do you see what I see? Before you said about the brother thing, there's this American Horror Story where... What? Nothing. <laughs> oh, I was like, why are you giggling? <laughs> Sorry. Do you believe that, like, well, in this story, I guess, they, like, a movie would cause, like, homicidal actions or whatever? Like, it caused people to kill people. Oh. Like, you're watching this movie, and then all of a sudden, you just get, like, homicidal rage. It sounds familiar. Wait, it was on American Horror Story? Mm Mm-hmm. What what season was it? It's part of their story's spinoff. Oh, I see. So it's just, like, a couple of episodes in one or two. Well, anyways, going back to this, like, do you believe that, like, watching a movie projects? If, if. You know what I mean? Like, bad. I see what you mean. Whatever, bad vibes or. And this is coming from someone. Or is it, like, your imagination thing in that shit? This is coming from someone who loves to watch, like, horror movies and shit. Uh Uh-huh. The only movie I've ever gotten that feeling from was the first Insidious. But that was just when I, when I first seen it, I'm like, Okay. (laughs) <laughs> maybe maybe take a break but like ever since then it's like I mean yeah I'm not, so you don't I, believe that yeah that kind of with what you were saying I feel like scary movies weren't really scary enough until Insidious came out and they like took it up and off oh it's Insidious Annabelle I was just Andre. watching Annabelle like two days ago I will not watch Insidious The Conjuring I love Insidious Jose and I want to watch it good luck I heard it's really bad I was just watching, I wanted to watch, uh, it was an exorcist movie. The priest, the exorcism of the priest, or priest exorcism or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the priest mm-hmm. exorcism. Mm-hmm. I need to watch that. Yeah, it's on It's pretty gore- gory. Yeah, it's gory. <laughs> yeah. It's glory. I love that shit. It's glorious. <laughs> it's like glory to God. God. No. Okay. This Wait, what do you think it, it was? What do you think happened? It clearly something followed them all. But from what? The movie? No, I don't think it's from the movie. Could I think be. it's in his head. I think it's. I think they're I both say, sleep paralysis. But how do they see the same thing? I don't know. That's weird. And they, the brother-in-law wasn't at the movie. 
What if their brother in laws like fucking with them? Because like you said, he wasn't acting weird when he woke up. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I like to believe it was like sleep paralysis and somehow they had the same sleep paralysis. I've never dealt with sleep paralysis. But also oh, he know. wasn't asleep. He was propped up on on his elbow on the bed. He wasn't even like Well, why down. was he propped up on his elbow on the bed? I mean, I still like that and chill, like if we're talking or if I'm on my phone or... What was he doing? I don't know. I wasn't in the story. Well, that's what I'm saying. He wasn't doing anything. Right, but like... I think he was thinking about likely, the movie. It's less likely that he has sleep paralysis if he wasn't laying down. Well, you're the one that suggested sleep paralysis. So you're that's like, what I'm saying. I'm going back on what I'm saying. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking he was thinking about the movie too much and thought he saw something. Hmm. I he just my, tripped himself out. Yeah, I've spooked myself. Plenty yeah. of times. Yeah, maybe. Huh. I don't think this is going to be guessable. Guessable. Because I don't even think this person knows what this thing was, so I'm just going to read it. Guess about okay. it. Oh, well, never mind. Um, okay. The thing at the bottom of the stairs. No, no. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. No, no, no. Have you guys seen that video? It's like a guy in his kitchen. And he's recording. Okay, there, uh, there's this guy in the kitchen, and in the kitchen, there's this door that leads to the basement, and he has his phone propped up because he is like, "Okay, I'm I'm finally gonna record this. Like, I'm not going crazy. I don't know what the fuck is happening." And his dog is barking at the door to the basement. So like, I mean, I could, I guess it could be fake, but it just seems so real. And he goes, "No, no, no, stay down there. Leave me alone." And the dog's like barking at the door. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, like stay back there. And he's like, oh my God, he's like freaking out. He just, he doesn't know what to do. He's like walking back and forth. And little by little, you can see like a dark shadow coming up the stairs. Yes, I have seen this video. Is it real? This sounds know. vaguely familiar. Yeah, and you can like, it's like a dark shadow just slowly emerges from the stairs. And it's like hesitate, it like. It hesitates when he tells him to stop. Yeah, it's just like, no, stop, like yeah. stay back there. Yeah. Probably you never seen this video. <laughs> Pause. We have to. Oh, do you ever, have you ever watched Noob's Top Five on YouTube? What do I even okay. type in? You would like it. It's um, it's a channel called Noob's Top Five, and he plays videos like that where he's found like the scariest videos on the internet that are like seemingly real. And this is some scared shit. <gasps> Here it is. Oh my god. Wait. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. All right. Let's take a break. Ready, Freddy? We're not guessing on this one. No, that's fine. All right. <clears throat> the thing at the bottom of the stairs. When I was four or five, we stayed in some of our family. We stayed with some of our family in an old house. Because it was so many people, I usually slept with either my mom or my sister. Mostly my mom. I always felt uneasy when I visited this house, especially at night. This one night, I was sleeping with my mom and I heard someone calling my name. At first, I thought it was my sister or one of my cousins. I got out of the bed, left the room, and went into the hallway. It was always dimly lit at night in case anyone needed to go to the bathroom. I looked down the hall to the rooms my sister and cousins were in, but their doors were closed, and I didn't see any lights peeking under their doors, so I knew they hadn't called me. I heard the voice call my name again, and I immediately turned into the direction of the stairs at the other end of the hall. The voice kept calling my name and telling me they needed my help. I slowly walked down the hall and stopped at the, at the top of the stairs. The hallway light illuminated most of the stairs except for the bottom two. So I couldn't see anything beyond that point, just darkness. The voice called my name again, but the tone shifted slightly. It was a little more friendly and inviting. It said again that it needed my help. I asked why it needed my help, but it just said it would have to show me for me to understand. It begged me to come down the stairs so that it could show me. I took a step down the stairs, but a voice in my head said it was a trick. So I yelled down to the voice that it was trying to trick me and I was going to get my mom. The voice started begging me more to help it and began to make crying sounds as if it were in pain. I immediately felt bad for it and started taking more steps down the stairs as the voice continued to plead for my help. Aww. I got halfway down the stairs when a voice screamed loudly in my ear. Don't take another step. If you do it, it will take you and you won't be able to come back. Huh? I stopped immediately frozen where I was. The voice at the bottom of the stairs asked me why I stopped. It told me to keep coming. I yelled no and I told it I knew it was trying to take me away. As I turned to run back up the steps, the voice let out a loud growl of frustration. Oh my god. 
I was only able to go up one step before hands materialized coming up from the step I was on and grabbed my ankles and tried to pull me into the solid wooden stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I started screaming to be let go and beating the hands with my little fist, but it only pulled me harder. I felt as if it were starting to pull me into the stairs. I started screaming for my mom and begging it not to take me. All of a sudden, I, all of a sudden, I felt hands around my waist and a force pulling me up and away from the hands. I looked up and saw a being was with me. It materialized from a somewhat smoky state until it became as, as solid as me. It was levitating in the air as it, as it reached down and had its arms around me, attempting to pull me up and away from the stairs. I clung to the being as if my life depended on it because I knew instinctively that it did. I'm not sure how long the tug of war went on. I just remember that voice at the bottom of the stairs growls getting louder with frustration and me crying and begging the being not to let it take me. Eventually, the being was able to pull me free from the hands. It lifted me up, but I soon realized it was taking me too far up, like it was going to take me through the ceiling. I freaked out and started squirming in its arms, begging it to take me to my mom. It started descending and then sat me down in the upstairs hallway outside the room where my mom was in. My mom was in. I busted through the door, ran to the bed, and started shaking my mom awake. I was hysterical. My mom woke up and asked me what was wrong. I tried to explain to her, but I was crying so hard and shaking she couldn't understand me. She told me it must have been a bad dream and tried to comfort me. She held me until I eventually fell asleep. The next morning, I tried to tell my mom what happened, but she again dismissed it as a bad dream. Maybe it was. The funny thing is, other members of my family mentioned that morning that in the night, they either heard that sounded like yelling in the hallway or asked if there was a dog in the house because they thought they heard growling downstairs. <laughs> Picasso. I liked it. I liked it at that. Yeah, that was a good one. With this person being four or five years old, it does sound like it was probably just a dream. Not could see, yeah. But with that being said, children see more than adults do. So I don't know. What do you think, Angelica? I think it's scary. <laughs> I think I think they probably made some parts up though because it seems a little like a little like movie like. Yeah, like a little bit too much for a four or five year old to remember. Yeah, or like getting pulled away from the stairs and almost ascend or almost ascended through the roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah, I don't know either. That is very strange. Yeah. Whose house was this again? Um, let's go to it. No. Um, some of like their a, family. A family's house? A family member's house? Mm -hmm. and it was their cousins there. So maybe an aunt or uncle. Gosh, that is just so creepy. Like, I can't even imagine being a kid and something calling out to me. And, and like, kids are so naive sometimes, too. So, like, they yeah. want to help someone in need. Yeah, that's true. They, they're more like soft hearted, no less, um, what's the word? Less um, suspicious. Yeah. What's the word? Discerning. They're less discerning. Mm. Stupid kids. All right. Here's a little short one about <laughs> a possible, uh, almost possible murder. It's called running in the woods. <laughs> oh my God. You like murder? Is that why you're rubbing your chin? Oh, Rob. Like scary shit. Do you remember Robert the vampire? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? What was up with him? Some people are just weirdos. Like, you would think, like, like you bring him up, like me going to tech. There were so many more kids that were worse off than him. What? He was normal. What do you mean? There was a literal. What was it doing? It started with a Dante, Damien, something like that. Dude wore a trench coat in ninety degree heat. And just walking around just staring at people. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to yeah. go make friends with that guy. Because when he comes up here, y'all, I, I want to get that phone call. Don't come to school tomorrow. Uh, cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. yeah. So. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. I think no. I just ran across Robert's, uh, what was his last name? We all know. I have no idea. I, think, I feel like it started with an F. You saw him recently? It does start with an F. Robert, yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Completely. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna look him Completely. up. I think I think it was him. We have looked at his Facebook before. We're literally putting him on blast right now. Yeah. Robert Frost. I'm no. so sorry, sir. 
<laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to read this story because it's really short. This story happened in July. My husband and I decided to take our kids camping one weekend since we can't do much else since the coronavirus. We love camping and have taken them before. Our daughter is two and our son is six. We went to our usual place where the campsites are about a half mile away from each other. Well, once it started to get dark, our kids started getting scared and wanted to leave. So we decided to take them to my dad's for the weekend and we went back to the campsite. Oh, hang on a second. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I thought I thought it stopped recording. No. Oh. Sorry. Um, once it started getting dark, our kids started getting scared and wanted to leave. So we de decided to take them to my dad's for the weekend. And we went back to the campsite well around midnight. We decided it was time to go to bed. We laid down and fell asleep rather quickly, and around an hour or two later, I woke up and had to pee. I woke my husband up, and he got up and walked with me to the bathroom, which was about a half, halfway between campsites. On our way back, we saw a light coming from our campsite, which kind of worried us, making us think our family was looking for us. So we walked quickly back toward the campsite, but right before we got out of the trees, my husband threw his arm out to stop me. What? He, he says, shh. I stay quiet and look back at the campsite and watch the light. And that's when I saw the glint of silver in their hand. A long knife. We dug down and hid behind some trees. And in a typical scary movie fashion, the guy heard us move and shine the light towards the woods. He started running towards the woods and we took off running in the opposite direction. We could hear him running behind us and we kept checking behind us and the light was gone. We eventually were able to circle to the road and crept slowly back to my husband's SUV. We got back in and drove as fast as we could and called the police. They had us take them back to the campsite and we waited in the car while they checked the campsite and the surrounding area. Soon we saw more police cars pull up and the two original officers came up and asked us to walk to the tent with them. We did and what we saw was shocking. Our tent was slashed to pieces and so was all of our stuff. The police ended up evacuating all other campers and did a sweep of the entire area and didn't find anything except a flashlight that was along the way we ran. We follow up with police every month and there has been no updates. I will post if anything new comes up. My question is, where were their kids? I was just thinking, like, wait, they went to go pee and left their kids there? And then ran out into the woods? Decided to take our two kids camping. See if anybody asked that question. We must have missed something. Didn't she say something about taking them to someone's father? Oh, yes. <laughs> I think Kelsey and I both missed yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> they got scared and wanted to leave, so we decided to take them to, to my dad's for the weekend. Yeah. And we went back to the campsite oh, well around okay, midnight okay, okay. and decided it was time to go to bed. So they well, continued camping. That's why you keep that iron on you right there, boy. <laughs> oh, God. Scary. That is scary. Do you ever think about like if you were in a <laughs> if you were in a dangerous situation if you would have like the will to fight? They'd have to be directly in front of me fighting me already. Like I would not approach them to fight. I would rather run. Like away. for example, say you're at a gas station, right? Mm -hmm. Typical gas station stop. You're stopping for uh, some coffee, a Red Bull, or some chips. And like someone comes in and tries to rob inside the gas station. Inside the gas station. I would station. hide. Or not. What like if they want to, like, kill everyone inside? Like, what What would you do? Then I would equip myself with a weapon and wait for them to come around the corner and hit them. I would not approach them. If they had a gun, you would try to hit them? Yeah, I would try to keep them... I would try to get them, like, off guard. Like, if they didn't know I was about to pop out on them. I'm about to pop out on them! Which <laughs> is a thing, honestly. Like, I mean, for sure, I think... I would try to hide, and if they find me, I would beg for my life. Like, I would be like, I would give you whatever you want, and, like, please let me live. Like... This is America. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> why do you have that? That is so it's creepy. It's Halloween. It's it's spooky dooky season. You remember when we were in high school? We used to have the um, Halloween theme songs, our ringtone during Halloween. Oh yeah, the piano. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh yeah, it's a different one. You're right. You're right. <laughs> what were you saying? Which is like Poltergeist or something. Oh, it's like an older movie. Like the older, older, the faster yeah. pace. Yeah, but you're right. What, do it yours again? That, was, that reminds that me was, of The Walking like Dead. The Twilight Zone or something. Yeah. Oh, that was The Walking Dead. No, well, that, yeah. Wait, Similar. shit. What was yours? Do it again. Halloween. That's Halloween. 
Yeah. Like the piano. Start playing guitar. All right, y'all want another story or we want to call it quits? What was the head? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm down for the stories. Honestly. One more. Okay, this one's short. I don't know if it's good though, we'll try. This one's called My Childhood Friend. When I was a child, I had a friend named Lucy. She was a neighborhood girl who would come over to my grandmother's house, which was where I lived at the time. There was a park by my house that had a deep creek next to it. I couldn't swim, so we always had to have an adult with us when near the creek. Lucy was always a toxic friend, but I didn't know. She would always threaten to stop being friends with me or stop talking to me if I didn't know what she want if I didn't do what she wanted. Ew. She would also always say that she deserved my toys and my family and my friends more than I did. I didn't mind this as I had a hard time making friends and Lucy was one of my only friends. Only friends. <laughs> Were you thinking the same thing? Onlyfriends.com. <laughs> oh no, I was laughing because Jose ran to the bathroom and I heard him pee. Oh. One night Lucy came yeah. over. No. Oh. One night Lucy came over and she said she was bored and wanted to go to the park. I told her my family was in the backyard and we had to have an adult with us to go. But she said she would leave and never come back if I didn't go to the park with her. What the fuck? I followed Lucy? her. I followed her and we went to the park. She walked right past the playground equipment to the creek, and I asked her what she was doing. She said she wanted to swim, and I told her I couldn't swim, and she called me a string of hurtful names, including weak, stupid, and an awful friend. <laughs> this really hurt my five-year-old self. Lucy got beat at home, I bet. <laughs> this really hurt my five-year-old self, so I started crying. This made her even angrier, and she told me something I'll never forget. You're an awful child. Your family deserved me and not you. Oh, she definitely got beat at home. I was so confused and sad that I just ran home. I never saw her again, and I just thought she was so angry she really never spoke to me again. Spoke to me again. No! Now, no. about a year later, my no. family was talking about my imaginary friends. No! And my mom ah, said, ah. hold on, it gets worse, it gets worse. My mom said my friend Lucy really creeped her out because she was supposed to have a daughter before me who they wanted to name Lucy. My mother had a miscarriage, and Lucy was never born. Oh, my God. That's bad. <laughs> you remember you talking shit about Lucy this whole time? She's a whole fucking demon child. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty bad. I love that. Wait. Okay. This says, let me read this comment. It might explain a little bit. Oh, your imaginary friend was quite real. You were being hurt and manipulated by a fallen angel. Oh my God. Had you not run away that evening, I am positive you would have been drowned in that creek. <gasps> These entities always seek to terrorize and harm. If you're interested in learning more, I recommend reading The Beautiful Side of Evil. Hey guys, did you know that we have merch? Merch. And if you're looking on YouTube, Angelica's wearing it. <laughs> um, if you want to buy merch, go to our Instagram. Our um, link tree is in our bio. Buy one for your girlfriend. Buy one for your boyfriend, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your auntie, your uncle, your cousins, your grandma, your grandpa. Yes. Everybody. They, they are unisexual. So <laughs> Unisexual. Okay? Unisexual. Um, if you don't have access to our... Uh, link tree you can just go to bonfire.com slash here dash we dash grow dash podcast you have shirts yes we have crew necks pullover hoodie mm -hmm. crew neck we could add some more stuff later if we want to but it is it is good please go get some please do it so that people say what's on your shirt and then you can say oh it's a podcast i listen to you should listen to and speaking of which if you're listening to the podcast right now which is how you're hearing my voice Send our podcast to someone you think will like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, before you got to the imaginary friend, I thought you were about to say that Lucy drowned. But uh, she was a real child. Yeah. And then I felt bad. This is worse. About Lucy. Yeah. yeah. That's way worse. This is way yeah. worse than that. I know you had this little imaginary friend. Her name was Lucy. And also, it was supposed to be your sister, but she was never born. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Wow. Yep. I don't think any of those were as scary as last week, last no, week's episode, last week's but they were scary. still pretty good. Yeah. So, all right, y'all. Rob, you got anything else to say? Uh, Farfignugan. Go buy some merch. 
And y'all should also go buy some merch. <laughs> Afri tape for cat. <laughs> Dab it to <a> scabbard. <laughs> Rip it that scabbard. Yep. <laughs> for canoodle. <coughs> for Shabaka <laughs> Oh my god, yes. <laughs> That's the only American thing though. Free Shabakadu. Ribbon at Scatter! Free Shabakadu! I've never heard that. Oh, okay. Free Shabakadu. And then the other one that keeps popping in my head is, I got two free tacos! <laughs> Alright, y'all. Go go check out our merch. Follow us on Instagram if you're not following. Send our podcast to the people you think will like it. And we'll see y'all next week. Bye! Bye! Bye.